All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another episode of Eat, Smoke, Drink. Whew. Today, I am super excited because we are about to drink through Raymalt Selection Brora. My first Raymalt Brora. Hopefully, it's not the last. So, before we begin, I would like to give you time to take your pants off and get ready. Okay, so as usual, sample bottle. Now, this didn't have much left after the tasting, so I'm gonna have to be very, very sparse and careful with this. A little bit more. There you go. <clears throat> okay, look. Before we begin, the Brora carries much accolades and prestige. It's, uh, you know, anything that's closed starts to get fanfare over time. Brora started getting that a long time ago and it started snowballing. Someone asked me, I published a short um, the other day showing what I'm going to review today and someone showed, said to me, you know, looking forward to the Brora, I wonder if it's worth the hype. You know, is anything really worth the hype when it costs 3,000 euros a bottle? I mean, or two and a half, two thousand euros a bottle? I mean, fuck, I mean, there is, there's got to be a diminishing return, right? There's got to be. There's got to be. Oh, okay, look. 1975 Brora, 20 year old, 51.9% ABV. This is the B297 bottling. Now, it's a 750 mil from memory. So yeah, get a little extra 50 mil on that one. Anyway, I had this at my 40th um, birthday tasting. We had actually a six lineup of rare malt. <laughs> it was pretty ridiculous. And um, we probably won't be doing that anytime soon, largely because it's not easy to find rare malts. Man, I am excited for this Aurora. It was rated highly by pretty much everyone who's tried it, but let's see if it is worth the hype. Let's get nose in. Oh! Oh, God, I love that rare malt nose. The rare malt nose is so distinctive. So distinctive. Oh. Hot glass, minerality. Bandage glue, that smell of bandage, you know, when you're strapping yourself, um, you know, when you go to the gym or your bandage, that, that bandage glue. Oh. Aniseed licorice, cloves, some spice in there, tarragon, green, fresh tarragon. It's a very herbal. Let me just bask in the sun while I nose the shit out of this. I'm not actually wearing any pants right now. I'm just kidding, I am. No, I'm not. Am I? Am I? Oh, I know that sounds weird, but it smells a little bit like asparagus. A slight digital note to it. A faint hint of smoke, but not peat. More like a coal smoke. Like actual coal lumps. The only time I've ever smelt coal lumps was sitting outside Sammy's house um, and he ran out of firewood, so he decided to put a bag of coals to heat us up outside in the winter and I'm like what the hell are you doing that's that's coal that's actual coal that's a coal they use to generate power that's like the smoke is so putrid it was hilarious coal smoke so if you don't know who Sammy is he is uh, my Indian brother from another mother he is um kindly hosts our whiskey tastings in his warehouse He's probably the only Indian I know that eats pork and beef. Cheers, Sammy, the coal smoke. But look, no, no, back to the whiskey. I got distracted. I, I digress. 
there's a powdery chalky smell like hot hot granite granite in the sun you know when you've got granite chips on your garden and it gets heated in the sun that smell minerality smoke definitely asparagus a herbal note to it that resin that glue that that bandage glue that is very rem that, that is very no, not reminiscent that is very rare malts <clears throat> Oh. Pine cones, you know when you hold pine cones, you know when I was a child we used to have a tree hut and I used to collect pine cones and then we used to have pine cone wars, you know this is back in the day when people didn't care about their safety and your parents didn't give a shit about your safety, I used to hurl pine cones at our friends, you know, and you get that pine cone smell that pine resin. It's got a bit of a smell of the solvent. Maybe chloroform. I mean acetone. Yeah, nail polish remover. You know, when, when my wife is sitting there removing her nail polish from with acetone. You've got that faint hint of acetone in the air. Oh shit. What I love about the rare malt is that the nose is not trying to be anything but what it intended to be. It's not trying to be super, you know, super sweet, super whatever. It's just whatever they felt like bowling at the time. And in this case, it's a bunch of stuff mixed together. I can start smelling a dusty wet paper. Not dusty wet paper, sorry. Like when paper gets wet and then you dry it and then that smell, that mustiness of that paper. But at the same time, I smell magazine, like a new magazine smell. Oh. But it's weird, I'm really getting that asparagus smell, that vegetal smell. It smells like kale. It smells like kale. Suited for vegans, right there. You know kale, that super greeny smell of kale? The asparagus and greeny smell of kale. It's weird. I know it sounds strange, but now I'm getting a slight irony smell, like a bloody steak. Oh, the nose is phenomenal. I can sniff this all day. Let's start sipping this asparagus piss. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. It's like being woken up with a turkey slap. Damn! <clears throat> Gotta love the rare malts. Honestly, uncompromising, unhindered flavor town. This is Guy Fieri's dream. Flavor town. You know Guy Fieri, that you know guy stuck in two thousands with the bleached chips. Yeah, anyway. Mmm. The oiliness, the resin. The oiliness and resin. It's just... It's like... Smoking coal smoke. So it's like... I can get coal smoke in the mouth. 
mineral, steel, rusty, but very, very vegetal. Fresh tarragon, like a herbal bouquet, a little bit of rosemary, spice bouquet with clove, aniseed, some licorice, some sweet, soft licorice. It's got a weird salinity. I don't know where the hell it's coming from, but Dutch licorice, that licorice with a hit of salt. It's metallic, it's sweet, it's herbal. It is super, super confusing. It's confusing the shit out of me. Confusing the shit out of me. It's like seeing a picture of a Thai lady boy and you go, she's pretty, and you realize she's a lady boy. I, what do you do? It's, I mean, what do you do? Like, I mean, they, they, they look good. I mean, yeah, anyway. Um, mm. There's a dramatic su sweetness followed by just strangeness, just strange as hell. I know this sounds strange, but I'm getting a little bit of a pool chlorine smell note the back of my palate like walking by a pool on a hot summer day splash on the side of the concrete and on the side of the pool and it's starting to evaporate and you're smelling that chlorine smell that kind of smell the asparagus is gone i'm not tasting asparagus piss in this but the bandage glue is right there nail polish remover right there I don't know if it's a sherry or a bourbon cast because I'm getting a strong hint of vanillin. I'm getting a strong hint of coconut. But, I mean, with a spice bouquet that I'm talking about, I'm not getting much cinnamon or nutmeg in there, which is a reminiscent of a Christmas cake barrel. But, I don't know. I, the oiliness, the, the mouthfeel. The mouthfeel is just so thick and oily and so viscous. It's just never ending. I'm salivating still. Like, it's like I've bitten to a lemon and I'm just salivating. I can't stop salivating. I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm going to do a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Mmm. Coal smoke, new magazine smell, old wet paper, I can taste it, damp cloth, a damp cloth, you know when you, when you take your bath towels and kitchen towels and you chuck it in the wash basket and you forget about it a little bit after a few days and you get that dampness, no, I take it back, you wash a load of towels, it's in the washing machine, you forget about it for a day and you come the next day and you go, it's a little bit damp. That dampness. It's got a distinct woody flavor. The pine resin is there. It's the mouthfeel. It's a mouthfeel. It's making my mouth tight. Like it's like someone is chucking a vacuum cleaner in my mouth and go <laughs> trying to just suck my mouth dry and tight. You know what I mean? It's really weird. Um, it is just a flavor phenomenon that. I just don't, every time I have a rare malt, I get, it just amazes me. This is what I love about it. Yes, Gordon McFowl can be good. Yes, SMWS can be good. Although SMWS, I'll be honest with you, the young expressions of SMWS, <clears throat> a chat for another day. The older expressions of SMWS is fantastic. Adelphi's, yes, fantastic. But there's something about the rare malt selection that just tickles my nutsack. It just tickles my nutsack in the right part, just between the butthole and the gooch. And it just gives you that perfect tickle that you go, shit, what is going on? What is going on? Seriously, God damn it. I, it's just something so compelling. I just wish I had millions of dollars and I would deplete the planet of rare malt. I honestly would. If I, if I had Elon Musk's net worth, I would not only buy all the rare malts in the world, 
I would buy all of the pants and socks and deprive the world of pants and socks just because it's funny. Mm. Mm. Oh, man, like I, is it worth the hype? That's a tough one. That's a tough one because you know, how do you say it's worth the hype? God damn it. How do you, how do you say it's something is worth the hype when it's worth two and a half thousand euros? Is anything really worth that hype? I don't know. I don't know if I can tell you that, but I can tell you now it is like nothing I've ever tasted in my life. It is fantastic and I highly suggest you try it out and buy it. Even if a group of you buys it, you sit on a bottle all night, you have three drams each, do it. It is absolutely phenomenal. I think it's worth the hype because it is something you'll never have again. Each three malts you have is one less tomorrow. Until next time, make sure you eat, smoke, drink. Cheers.